So please join me in welcoming, welcoming Chris Allred with Riverstone Bank to the stage. Chris.
And then our bronze sponsors, uh, Stag Arms, Meridian Trust, Federal Credit Union, Blue Cross Blue Shield of Wyoming, and Appaloosa Broadcasting. Let's give them a round of applause. Thank you so much to all of our sponsors. Now, please welcome Jeff Gardner, president of Magic City, to tell us a little more about the upcoming <coughs> annual festival of treats event. Good afternoon. <clears throat> Excuse me, I uh, guess you just introduced me, so uh, I don't need to introduce myself, but I do want, you know, to, we're going to talk about festival trees, but before that, I want to talk a little bit about Magic City Enterprises, uh, the fact that we've been a part of the Shannon community for 52 years, uh, originally uh, incorporated in 1971 through the Shine Kiwanis Club, uh, who wrote the initial grant to create what is now Magic City. So we have a great relationship and, and strong relationship with the Kiwanis, of, Kiwanis Club of Cheyenne. Uh, we, for those of you who don't know, and if you don't, I'm sorry, I must not be doing my job well enough to make sure you know what we do. Um, we support people with intellectual and developmental disabilities and acquired brain injuries to live a, a typical life of quality in our community. So that looks different to every person. Uh, obviously, uh, a lot of support in people's homes uh, to find and keep meaningful employment, to develop meaningful friendships and relationships. Um, whatever it is that that person needs and wants, we will, we will try and provide that support so again, they can live a uh, typical life of quality. So, that costs money. So, uh, uh, one of our major fundraisers for the year is the Festival of Trees, which has been ongoing for many, many years. We've, uh, I, I would say it's evolved over the, the many years that it's been going. Um, so the Festival of Trees, if you have not gotten information, and my guess is that I look around, most of you have gotten a, a packet of information at your office. Uh, it'll be December 1st, starting at uh, 5 p.m., 5.30? I should know these things, 5.30. <laughs> uh, and this year it's, it will be at the Met, the gallery at the Met downtown. Very excited about that space. Uh, so obviously because the name implies, We'll have uh, you know, fabulously decorated trees for members of the community and businesses here who volunteer to decorate trees that we then auction. We'll also have other live auction items, silent option, dinner, uh, of course, drinks. And it, uh, it, it always is a, it's just a great, great night, one that, uh, as I said, continues to evolve. So we're particularly excited about this year's Festival of Trees. And one of the reasons that we're particularly excited is because the the money that, that we raise and actually all of our ongoing fundraising efforts because we are a nonprofit so not so fundraising is a critical part of what we do uh, is going to be focused on technology specifically enabling technology that will allow people to live more independently with more privacy uh, with less less staff interaction uh, when I stop and think for a moment about you know having someone in my face all day long asking if I brushed my teeth or if I took a shower. Uh, I don't think I would like that. So technology is certainly there. It continues to evolve. We uh, are in the process of fitting uh, some apartments that we were able to purchase with this amazing technology. Things like sensors on the doors, sensors on the windows, stove sensors that can alert someone that the stove has been left on. Uh, you know, emergency response systems if someone falls, uh, you know, all kinds of stuff. And like I said, it continues to evolve all the time. Uh, smart technology for uh, supporting people to self-administer medication. Uh, the list goes on and on, and uh, we really want to be the, uh, you know, the, the leader in, in Wyoming in providing these kinds of supports and services. So, uh, in closing, very excited about the future of the sports that we provide, and we know that technology plays a role in that. We hear that a lot here at, at Chamber Events, technology in general. Technology is, uh, the evolution of technology is no different for uh, for our field. So thank you to, uh, to Dale and the Chamber for giving me a few minutes to talk about this. And if you have questions about Magic City or the Festival of Trees, please uh, stop by after. 
Uh, we'd love to talk about it. Thank you. Thank you. I know that Festival of Trees is a, a wonderful project for our community. Chris, I just got one question for you. How much do you owe Stig and Ron after you talked about them so well? You, did you have to use a credit card or did they let you write a check from your bank? It's a long road, Dale. <laughs> so these guys are obviously long-term supporters in our community. And it's a good example for us, right? Because none of us do anything on our own. Everything we do as a community is on the shoulders of those that came before us. So it's always great to hear somebody come up and talk about their leadership and what they've done and how they built the foundation. Because Cheyenne's a pretty cool place, I think most of you agree. Um, but it's been built by those who came before us and now we have it in our hands. What are we going to do with it, right? And that's what the Chamber's about, about looking to the future and deciding what we can do in this community to make it a better place to live, work, and do business. And even for guys like Glenn and Steve to retire, right, or whatever. So <coughs> thank you guys for sponsoring today. I appreciate it very much. Give them another round of applause. <laughs> Thanks, so just a few things to put on your list today. One thing was thank all of you who either came out and supported our businesses or participated in the Business Expo. It's quite a bit bigger this year than it has been. Actually, it's the biggest it's been since before the pandemic. Um, and so we appreciate all of you for coming out and we get to see wonderful businesses in our community but we have a lot of folks coming out and try to support them and we're getting into that season you know you don't have to drive south you can stay in your community we have a lot of things here right we have a lot of capability in our community we have a lot of products and so we we try to just use the business expo to kick that off so thank all of you guys for your sponsorships um, for Circle Champions, it was a wonderful event again for the Business Expo. Thank you so much for that. And a couple other things I bring to your attention. So one of the things the Chamber is tackling in the coming year is we are partnering with the U.S. Chamber of Commerce Foundation to sponsor the Civics Bee for the state of Wyoming. So this is something that is happening in every state across the United States. They couldn't get enough folks to manage it in their hometowns. And, Wyoming, so they called us and they said, will you do it for the whole state? And we said, yep, if you'll help us, we'll do it for the whole state. And so we're going to roll out Civic in uh, this next year in 2024, and it's very exciting as we look to educate our youth and work for future workforce. It's an awesome program. So if you don't think it is, how many people can tell me what the 27th Amendment is? That's the question. Does anybody know who know who first um, tried to get the 27th Amendment to pass? Let me Google that. <laughs> <laughs> you can Google that. So interestingly, the 27th Amendment, I think, was passed in 1992. The first guy to put out the, uh, that amendment was James Madison. It was in his original 12. But our whole supposition on this is when we look across the country and the, from the U.S. Chamber and chambers across the country and, and we see this, the, our political environment, it's just a constant churn. How do we solve that? We solve that by helping our young people understand the country they live in, right? Why do we have the First Amendment, Second Amendment, Third Amendment, Fourth Amendment? What does the Supreme Court do? And I can tell you we'll try to expose adults as we do this too. I gave the test that kids are regularly getting correct to qualify for the next level 200 times um, in, in Cheyenne. From everybody from, I had a judge take it, I had attorneys take it, doctors, lawyers, accountants, people from every walk of life. How many perfect scores do you think I got from adults on that? You guess? I got two. Both of them worked in my office, Elizabeth. <laughs> So she's a little extra smart person, right? so most of us aren't quite so blessed. But we can all learn, to learn a little bit more about our country. So I hope as this comes along, we don't really need, we have funds that come from the U.S. Chamber Foundation to do this, but I hope you will consider volunteering to come and watch the kids and celebrate our youth as they are celebrating our country. 
Something else I'd like to bring to your attention, just because we're going to we got to have Sheriff Kozak here, and Sheriff, thanks for being here today. But he's going to talk about crime in Laramie County and what he does. So something pretty cool. Last year during the legislative session, um, we partnered with Representative Oakley to uh, pass a bill in the state legislature that was very important for retail crime across the state. So I wake up today, it's a perfect day, right? So I wake up today, what is the headlines from the U.S. Chamber of Commerce? Highlighting states that ha actually have marched down this path. There were 12 states on that list. I'm proud to tell you that through our legislative work last year, Wyoming was one of those 12 states. So give yourself a round of applause. And thank you. Thank you. If you want to go look that up, it's House Bill 112. And, um, you know, the Retail Association, you know, from the, the National Retail Association, State Retail Association, really this was important to get done. And more, more work will yet to be done, but it crime challenges businesses across this country. All right, so um, next thing I would have on the list for you is that we need your help, right? How many of you volunteered for Christmas Parade in the past? Raise your hand high, you should be proud of that, right? Well, we need you, and we need you to contact your neighbors. And uh, we, the requirements from the city this year are, are such that we need 100 volunteers, which is about double of what we've had that have in the past. Plus, we have to have raised $8,000 to pay our bill to the city to be able to have the Christmas parade. We need your help. Maybe not on your table, but you can go online and buy poinsettias. A wonderful chance to dig yourself out of the ditch with your staff, with your wife, with whoever. Some of you I can see really need to do this, right? Um, but that, this is a way we fund, the, that fund uh, the Christmas parade, and please sign up. It's a good opportunity. Maybe your business, you know, if you have the need to be introduced to people, you can come take a street corner, put your sign up, meet a lot of people, network. So please consider that. And if you would, share our Facebook post and uh, get the word out for us because that's going to be very important for us. <laughs> Next month is the Women's Leadership Luncheon. It's one of my favorite luncheons of the year where we spend the whole meeting just celebrating a, a, an amazing female leader in our community. So if you don't think we have a few, ask somebody who is having to do, go through the nominations for this year. 53? 53. So um, a lot of folks in there that are very deserving. So please make a, a point to come to the luncheons. It's a very special thing. And I think it really highlights, again, some of our leadership in our community. All right, we'll do our free lunch drive. Steve, you're close. You can come back and for me. <laughs> yeah, well, if you drew a card from Ron Van Vos, it was really good. <laughs> Sam Weinstein from Wyoming's <laughs> Yeah, you didn't win the money, Sam. Well, uh, I need you back. Oh, you've got cards. I'll let Paula do that. So she's not a banker, We like internally to refer to this as the take the chamber staff out to lunch ticket. 305-7115. Well, come get it. Come to me. coming today and uh, please do remember to push that for volunteers we really need to jump that number over the next uh, over the coming weeks and that will be very important so that we make sure we make the Christmas parade sustainable 
And now I'd ask your chairman, Paul Quigler, to come to the stage and introduce our speaker to this today. Thank you. great presentation for everyone today. It's my privilege to introduce a leader who's taken it upon himself to address the pressing issue of crime in our community. <coughs> Sheriff Kozak, a dedicated public servant, stands at the forefront of our efforts to ensure the safety and security of Cheyenne. With unwavering commitment and a vision for a safer future, Sheriff Kozak is here to share his insights, strategies, and plans to combat crime and preserve the cherished values of our community. Please join me in welcoming Chair Kozak as he outlines Cheyenne's current challenges, his initiatives, and outlines the path forward for Cheyenne. Let's welcome him to the stage. Pleasure to be here. Thank you to the Chamber for the invite. Uh, thank you, Colonel, for your defenders and protecting our country. Thank you for being here as well. Thank you for your sponsors. It was a great lunch. Um, they asked if I want to do this, and I'm not sure, and they said, hey, it's free food, I'm in. So, that's why everyone else is here, too. <laughs> All right. Um, if you ever want to get a cop to do something, that's how you do it. Um, so, anyways, I do want to introduce Chance Wakama, the undersheriff. Do you want to stand up there? <laughs> Chief Deputy Perry Rockman. He does... The jail, court security, and juvenile services, and then we got Chief Deputy Aaron Valdir. And he supervises patrol operations and detectives and our professional civilian staff. Um, so I, well, I'm going to talk a lot about our successes in the sheriff's office, but it's really these gentlemen, and more so, it's our employees who are making it happen, and that's it's because of their leadership, keeping everyone on track. So thank you guys for what you do for our community. So in my talk today, I'm gonna to talk about, is your mission like a lava lamp? So I always <laughs> like to, you know, hopefully you can get something out of this business owners and stuff, because when I came into the sheriff's office, our mission was like a lava lamp. And so I'll explain this as we go forward here. So, Looking at that lava lamp, though, reminds me of a story. Um, right after I got elected to sheriff, my wife had me go to some um, antique antiquing places. So, do you guys, do you guys have to do that? Sure. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, and so there were some lava lamps there, and I was looking at the lava lamp. But next to the lava lamp, there was a, this really old-looking, kind of metal, colorful lamp. And so I picked it up. I was looking at it, and a, and a genie came out of it. And the genie says. What's your one request? Your new sheriff, tell us what's your one request. I said, well, actually, my request is, I've always wanted to go to Hawaii, but I, I'm afraid to fly, you know, I don't like ships and boats and things like that, so maybe can you build a highway that goes from the mainland up to Hawaii, and then we can drive there. And the genie is thinking about this and says, and starts thinking out loud, the genie says, well, that's a lot of concrete. Uh, you got to make the pylons a mile down to hit the surface bottom of the ocean. There's a lot of environmental impact with sea life. You're going to interfere with shipping lanes, international law. You're like, that's 2,000 miles of, of interstate. So, no, no, I can't do that. Come up with another request. So, I said, well, okay, I'm a new sheriff. If you can tell me what are the issues that, that I'm going to be faced with and how can I fix them? And the genie uh, looked at me and said, uh, would you like that interstate to be one or two lanes? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, definitely a lot of challenges coming in. So one of the first things, we had to change the culture in the sheriff's office. And what we had to do was look at our mission. And actually, it was like a lava lamp. So first of all, you know, ask yourself, is it outdated? And so our mission had something in there about horse wrestling and things like that. So just a little bit outdated, so we had to modernize it. Um, is your mission statement boring? So, blah, 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 blah. There's something in about professional, and another thing about service, blah, blah, and horse thieving. So, um, so anyways, you know, we asked the employees, what is our mission? And no one knew it. Um, 
no one, not, not one person in the agency knew it. Even though, like a lava lamp, it might look kind of cool because it was hanging on the wall, it was on a big metal plaque, but none of the employees knew it. It looked cool, but it really didn't mean anything to them. It was too long, too boring, it was outdated. Um, and it was not very bright. So, kind of just like a lava lamp. So, is your mission like a lava lamp? Outdated, boring, might look kind of cool, but not very bright. So ours definitely was, and so we needed to change it. That was the first thing. So what we did was we um, brought a group together of different employees throughout the agency, uh, from the jail operations, juvenile services, civilian, sworn deputies, and we brought them all together and formed what we called an employee-led committee. And so that committee is still in existence. So what that committee's uh, mission is to look in the agency for things and just fix them. So they don't have to be worried about the chain of command. They report, the chairman reports directly to me and ask me about things about budget and things like that. And in most cases, they have full authority and approval just to get stuff done, just to change things that are important to the employees. But the first thing was to look at the mission and redo the mission that was important to all the employees. And so this is what they came up with after uh, several weeks and conferring with other employees. And they came up riding for the brand as one team to fight crime. Um, and they came up with this, I think, because you look at the history of the sheriff's office, there's a lot, there was between the jail operations and, and patrol, there was a lot of headbutting, okay? And I think the people that worked in the jail felt like they were inferior to those who worked in patrol. So that's why the employees said, hey, we want to be one team. We want to be one team working together to fight crime. And they also said, we want to make sure when we talk about one team, we're talking about one team with the community. The community needs to be involved in what we're doing. We're talking about one team to fight crime and other agencies. We want to be one team with the Cheyenne Police Department, with the Higher Patrol. We should be all working together as one team. So that was really important for them to put that in their mission. And ultimately, it's to fight crime. That's our only reason. That's why we exist, to fight crime. Put criminals in jail, and then once they get in jail, we're going we're to do things to try to help them from keep coming back to jail. Um, so it's pretty simple. So everyone knows that. And uh, we make sure, I know that they know it, and they came up with what brand means, too. So if you look at the brand that was developed, LCSO, and then the, the B actually stands for brave. R stands for being resilient, and the employees specifically wanted that word in there because, hey, let's face it, there's a lot of PTSD, there's a lot of high stress in our career, and uh, suicide. And so we wanted to confront those issues right up front, and the employees wanted to make sure we are a resilient agency, we're helping each other. Not only ourselves, but the community, they're struggling with these issues as well. Military as well. So we're, we're there as one team to help each other. Accountable. They wanted to make sure that all employees of the sheriff's office were accountable. In the past, they felt like upper management was not accountable to the same rules as they were. So they wanted that in there. No nonsense. Okay? Meaning, hey, let's forget about all the stupid political stuff and this and that. Let's do our job and let's do it right. And so I know the employees are proud of this because I was out working last, uh, last week. I was out working. And the deputies got into a pursuit with this burglar, and they took him into custody, and they got him handcuffed, and I pulled up on scene. They didn't know I was there, but the one deputy stands up and says, Yeah, you know what that is? That's no nonsense right there. <laughs> so, <laughs> so they're living up to the brand of the mission. All right? And dedicated. So uh, I know they're proud of this because it's on all their memos that they're writing. They got stickers of our brand, and it's on every single door in the jail now. It's everywhere in the agency. They're always talking about it on a daily basis. Um, and we actually have a brand. So there's uh, Deputy Harrison there. Has a brand. We have it registered with the Livestock Board, because we were worried somebody would probably uh, register it before us, and then they'd say, hey, you can't use that anymore, sure. So we actually got it registered. Um, and uh, so Deputy Harrison there is, a, is with the Guard. He's actually one of the Blackhawk pilots. And so we do rally our relationship with the military. Uh, actually, Chance Walker, my under sheriff, is also in the military as well. Um, and Deputy Harrison there, I see a lot of women, googly eyes, some of you guys as well. The answer is yes. Okay. So, all right. 
the um, so hot. So we've been doing it. We've been successful in recruiting. The first thing was to change the culture, change the mission, and uh, rebrand ourselves. And so this is one of our advertisements on social media. Um, and then we'll, I'll show you the commercial that we produced, and we have it uh, playing locally next week, but we've been playing it in the Denver area as well, and we've been successful with it. Times may have changed, but our grit and determination remain the same. Because it was a big problem, um, and actually, 
Yeah, that's a big problem. So if you look there, so I, I didn't pull out any data. I figured you probably wouldn't trust trust my fuzzy math and this and that. So we, you just go to Lending Tree. You just do a, a search Lending Tree. Um, I think they're focused on well, because real estate, right? It's important real estate, bank loans, and this and that. People want to move to where there's no crime. Well, unfortunately, Shine was not the place in 2021. So Shine in 2021 had the fourth highest increase in crime in the entire country. Uh, when it comes to auto theft and burglary. And in fact, that 407 auto thefts per 100,000 in 2021, that's twice the national average. So it was a big problem. And it happened in that one year in 2021. So I left as police chief in 2020. <laughs> <laughs> Just in time. So new mayor came in and then crime just shot way up. Twice, <laughs> twice the rate. Out of control, auto theft, break-ins, burglaries, and so, you know, of course I was not happy about that. Uh, maybe a little bit. But, uh, so, no. I was mad, so what's the cause? What was the cause of it? Um, and I'd like to say it was because I left, but that was, really wasn't the reason. So, it was because the jail, one of the things, we had issues with the district attorney. You know, we also had a jail that closed. You know, they were only open for violent offenders. Uh, the police officers, deputies, the high patrol could not bring anyone to the jail if it was a property crime or if it was a drug crime, even if they had warrants for the arrest. And that went on for a year and a half. So initially it started because of COVID, but, um, but then it continued and it was because of staffing, because so many people had left the agency, there were nearly 80 vacancies. They just could not open. So, um, yeah, they had no vacancy, essentially. So cops could not do their job. And, uh, and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to run for sheriff, was to open the dang jail and keep it open because that's where criminals need to be brought to. And so now, uh, so now we got that sign up. Vacancy, it's gonna stay lit, vacancy. Bring them in. We got, our, our, we got a couple from the Cheyenne Police Department, stand up. Give these guys a hand. Applause. My commitment to your agency and everyone else in law enforcement, bring me the criminals. Okay, we want them. All right. So, we, uh, three goals when we started, we took office, and here's what they are essentially. Number one, we wanted to invest in the in employees. And this took some work to convince the commissioners, but we finally got it sold to bring everyone up to market value. One of the problems was new employees were making more than senior deputies had been there for 10 years. And so we had to fix that. And luckily the commissioners, thank you, they gave us a budget of almost a million dollars to fix the salary, and we did it. Everyone's at market value now. Um, new equipment, all the equipment was old. Body more cameras was old, we replaced all that. Tasers were outdated. We got new stuff. New, the jail deputies did not have any protection with ballistic or stab-proof vests. They all have them now. Um, the vehicles were updated. New radios in the detention center. They weren't working. They were outdated. So the money was there. I'm not sure why the last administration didn't spend it, so we're, so we're spending it. And we're focusing it on the employees where it should be invested. We also um, uh, started a process for electronic performance evaluations and documenting performance because what, hap what was happening in the past when you get your annual evaluation the only thing that's in there is what happened last week because that's all the supervisor remembers right and so now we got a process in place that's documented throughout the entire year electronically promotional process is now fair there was a perception it wasn't so now we hired an outside company to help us with promotional process and everyone gets to wear cowboy hats now, so. Right. Uh, so that helped me for a while. So how many of you guys like the deputies wearing cowboy hats or anything else? Uh, the uh, connect with business, this is big. So uh, social media, how many of you guys track us on Facebook, social media? So we're really trying to be engaged with the public. And uh, it is, also, we have our full-time public information officer now, Brandon. Wave to everyone. So, he is full-time. We didn't have that before. 
We also started what's called a From the Pod podcast in the jail. Myself and Chief Rockman. We do that about once a month. And we just let people know what's going on in the jail. And actually, that's helping us recruit, too, because people who want to work in the jail, they look at all the podcasts, and they're like, hey, that's a place I want to work. All right, uh, rural deputies. For years and years and years, you hear the sheriff's office say, we don't have enough people to have deputies up in, the, in Alvin, out in Pine Bluffs, out in Burns, over the West County, um, out near the park. And so we were able to fix that right away. So within the first couple months, because we had a lot of former deputies come back, um, and so we put them right out into the rural deputy position. So that's staff now. We also have events. We're hitting every event, community event, just to connect with the community. Uh, neighborhood night out, the first time ever the sheriff's office was involved in that this last year. And then we started a school resource deputy program. So we got four deputies assigned, should be assigned to the schools, uh, Pine and Burns. Um, but hold up, we've been waiting five months for the county attorney to approve the contract, so I'm not sure if we get it done this year, we're waiting on the county attorney. But once we get that done, we'll put the deputies in the schools. Um, and then out here, lower crime and uh, recidivism. So obviously, mental health, we, have a, we want to start a mental health pod. Almost half of our inmate population has mental, is being treated for mental health in our jail by our mental health staff. Um, I would say what is it, about 10, 15 are chronic, severe mentally ill right now, Perry? Um, probably about, we probably have around 70 in the jail that are either on psychiatric meds or been diagnosed as severely mentally ill. Okay. Um, and then there's, there's, I would say 15 that are really, really severely mentally ill. And uh, they're the ones we hold in our booking area. But it's not the right environment for them. And unfortunately, the state hospital, is not working it's not I, they want to they just don't have the people and so we're backed up and we we got these people for over a year in our jail that should be in the state hospital so we're going to we're going to create a mental health pod uh, for a better environment for these people again that contract's been waiting for about five months for the county attorney so we're ready to move on that we have the budget as soon as uh, we get the approval uh, we had we started a thing with our inmates daily inspections uh, you probably read about our shakedown that we did jail wide the first time we did a jail jail wide shakedown we did not find any drugs or, or weapons we had uh, I think it was nine canines drug dogs come in and search the jail so that's good news we didn't find anything on that but we also at the same time the very next day we started doing daily inspections with the inmates and their cells. So now it's required, they gotta make their bed every day, they gotta put their shoes, they gotta hang up their towel, towel, they gotta fold their clothes, they gotta clean their room. So essentially, yeah, we're making them clean the room. So, uh, <laughs> but uh, they, uh, they, they have to, and then what happens is if they do this, they get more time out of their cell, and we'll inspect them on a weekly basis. I come in on a monthly basis, and on a monthly basis, the winning pie will get a pizza, a pizza uh, party. So yeah, it's kind of teaching it may take. If you do the good thing, you're gonna get good things happen to you, right? So if you don't do the right thing, not so good it's gonna happen. So anyways, do you guys like that concept from the jail? Yeah. All right. Um, addiction programming, bringing that back slowly. Um, we, we have some long-term plans. We're probably like three years out before we actually start a medicated assistant treatment program. And, but there's some exciting things we're working with Crossroads. Anybody here from Crossroads? All right, uh, so some, some exciting things we're working with them. And then also we have, um, oh, warrant arrest. So obviously our focus is because over that two year period almost where no one was getting arrested and crime was shooting up. So now we gotta go out and find these people that were committing all the crime and get them in jail. So, so we've been focusing on uh, capturing the warrants, which is gonna lead us to this our uh, Clinko game. And so, catch a fugitive. We're gonna play that as soon as I'm done with the questions. And we'll, we'll pick a lucky, lucky contestant here to play, drop the coin. Uh, but so far this year, uh, 43 of our most wanted list fugitives have been captured. If you go on our social media, you can see a list at the top, end at the top, our most wanted fugitives are up there. And so we get a lot of tips on, um, from citizens. And actually we've had five fugitives when they see the coin dropped on them. And because they watch social media and they're like, no, <laughs> so they just turn themselves in. So they're, like, they're coming for me, so I'll turn myself in. 
Uh, so it's been working. So again, we're, we're and it's working. So everyone working together, the police department, high patrol, us, all these programs, crime is going back down to normal ranges again. So this year, next year, hopefully, we will get that down to a, another a, a good level. Not good, but the way it used to be before I uh, went to chaos. Um, and so, unfortunately, you guys in the banking, real estate business, the national uh, crime reporting takes two years to catch up. So right now, you're going to deal with people that are going to say, hey, what's with the high crime in China? I'm not moving there. So you can tell them, hey, the sheriff has a plan. It, it's going down. So that we're putting them, the bad guys in jail again. All right? So that's, that's uh, any questions? And then we'll play Tinkle. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. I was curious what the relationship with homelessness here and crime is and, and what the solution is to address that. I mean, thankfully, we have the wind as a, as a deterrent, but clearly, like other you know, large cities and stuff, you don't want that here either. Or at least I don't want that here either. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Uh, so I know I'm uh, working with the, the police department and the sheriff's office. You know, we enforce the rules with everyone, including the homeless. So the rules like, you know, you can't be in public, you can't camp in certain areas, you can't um, drink in public. So we enforce that regardless, you know, if you're homeless or not. Where a lot of these bigger cities, they don't, they turn a blind eye to that stuff. And so we do enforce it. We get people in our jail, and once they're in jail, uh, we have our mental health uh, employees, social workers that work in the jail, and they contact the homeless, and we try to get them into services. And there's so many things in, the, in China that can help people. And so we do try to get them connected. And if someone says, hey, I'm willing to go into this program or whatever, we'll do what we can to get them released from jail into a program. So, but anyway, anyways, we do enforce the rules. And so that's the key with that. Yeah. Yes? Sheriff Kozak, I'd like to just add that he's actually on the board for Kamiya. So if you're worried about homelessness, I would encourage you to also um, invest some of your funds or your time into the Kamiya Homeless Shelter, too. Like, that's really where it's yeah, it definitely is uh, funding. We on the board. We always are like, ooh, are we gonna make it another six months? So, and then we get a we get a good donation. It's like, ooh, we can make it another six months. So again, if you can't help with the community shelter, this Saturday is a turkey trot. So if you're not doing anything, sign up, come on down, eight o'clock, community shelter, and and do the five k, and help us uh, raise a little money for community. All right, any other questions? All right, then I think. We could be. <laughs> Catch a fugitive. So, you know, when you say, uh, we'll get everyone involved in this. So, you know, um, on Wheel of Fortune, you know how they go, Wheel of Fortune. All right, same thing. Catch a fugitive. <laughs>
program. You may remember him from National Night Out back in August. We would like to welcome Charles Swank back to To Catch a Fugitive. His warrant is for theft more than a thousand dollars. All right, Charles Swank, you didn't learn your lesson, and you didn't listen to the judge, so you're back on our list. And actually, I have a coin here next to him. So whoever drops the coin, if you land on Mr. Swain, you will get one of our shirts that has our new logo on it. All right? And also, whoever drops the coin will get to keep the challenge coin from the sheriff's office. All right, I think we have our contestant to drop the coin is Kim. Come on now. Thank you so much for your attention today. Let's all join hands to work towards a brighter future and safer Cheyenne. Let's have a great weekend.